in these comic book movies and shows, we've often seen a lot of actors and actresses return to these roles for whatever reason. Sometimes it is very pertinent to the story. Sometimes it's just fan service. Um, we saw a lot of fan service during the most recent CW Infinite Crisis crossover episodes. We saw Tom Welling come back. We saw Brandon Routh come back as their respective Supermans. Um, we even saw Burt Ward reprise his role as a version of Robin. It was it was quite entertaining to see. Um, we've even seen Michael Keaton getting ready to reprise his role as Batman in the upcoming Flash movie, as well as Ben Affleck. There's always been just certain people who come back to these roles. And we as fans, of course, love it. And we will always love it because it's, this, it's there's a nostalgia feeling to it. And I think that it can be done again. I came across this article on comic book resources. And the article reads... The MCU is sleeping on the perfect Hulk foe, Ed Norton as the maestro. Here's hear this out for a second. Now, Norton's only stint as the Hulk came in the MCU second film, The Incredible Hulk, and the role has since been recast with Mark Ruffalo. Now, those of you who don't know who Maestro is. Inhabiting the alternate timeline of the future imperfect, the Maestro is an older version of their Hulk who gave in to his corruption in a post-apocalyptic world so he could rule over the ash heap that remained in humanity, retaining all his devious intelligence as well as his monstrous strength. The maestro is a massive threat, more than capable of filling Thanos' boots in terms of becoming the MCU's next major villain. Such projects are the exact type that Norton thrives in. Dark, complex, and layered roles like the narrator from Fight Club and Norton's debut character from Primal Fear are his bread and butter. And showings like American History X prove just how compelling he can be when embodying a detestable villain. This could definitely work. I know a lot of people have been throwing around names for the big bad. People want Galactus. People want Doctor Doom. Some even have said they want or at least Norman Osborn. But to have Ed Norton come back as Maestro and be the big bad in the MCU, yo, that smells like absolute money to me. And you can even have him begin his rise to, I guess, rise to take over in the in the She-Hulk series. You can start there. This could work. With the way they're doing things on WandaVision with the multiverse, yo, definitely this could work. This could absolutely work. This could absolutely work. MCU, Kevin Feige, if you are listening, do this. Do this. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek? Episode 67. Welcome, everyone. This is Do You Speak Geek? I am your host, Nix. Thank you for joining us. If you join us for the first time, welcome to the pod. And if you're an avid listener, welcome back. This is Do You Speak Geek, the place where we give you all the latest and greatest in the geek realm as far as news and content. Shout out to everyone who has been listening. Shout out to all new subscribers. Shout out to all new followers. And just shout out to everyone who's part of the DYSG family. If you are listening to this podcast, hopefully you are listening on Spreaker. Spreaker, that is the home team, Spreaker.com. And if not there, you can check us out on other podcast outlets such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio. The list goes on and on. We're kind of everywhere. Do you speak geek.com is the central hub for everything DYSG. 
please be sure to check out the website there. Check out the blogs, check out the photos and even other content that you won't find anywhere else. Please, please follow us on social medias, Facebook at DYSGFB, Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets and Instagram at Do You Speak Geek. DYSG Live is going to be hugely, and I mean hugely, popping off. We are celebrating two years of DYSG all month long in March, and we're going to be having a series of interviews every Friday in the month of March to celebrate. We're also going to be having some giveaways, some new content, and maybe a few surprises. So please, please be on the lookout for those. YouTube, the only place where you can find the Dono and Daddy show. Please be sure to go there. Hulk smash that bell for all notifications and leave your comments. We want to know what you guys think. First Friday fights is coming up and we got a big one. It's kind of a part two to when we done before, but not really. You know that we did My Hero Academia versus X-Men, but we're going to be picking two specific characters. We're going to be doing Gambit versus Bakugo. It's going to be fun, and I can't wait. You guys are going to love it, I promise. Nothing really big this week. We're really going to just jump right into, you know, my favorite portion of the show. Y'all already know what that is. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the source wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's jump right into it. The pull list this week. Marvel's Voices. Shout out to Angelique, Ro- Angelique Roche. Shout out to her, man. Celebrating Black History Month in mighty Marvel style. Black Panther, Storm, Blade, Falcon, Ironheart, Luke Cage, Spectrum, the list goes on. Marvel's incredible legacy of black heroes gets the star treatment in this action-packed special. New and established creators take on their favorite heroes in a dizzying array of stories designed to inspire and uplift. Marvel's Voices program is your number one stop for the world outside your window. Please don't sleep on this one. It is amazing. They even had Charlemagne the God from The Breakfast Club do a story. That's a pretty big deal. Another huge, 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 huge milestone returns. Oh, my God. Milestone returns, people. At long last, the return of the legendary Milestone Comics imprint has kicked into high gear with Milestone Returns Zero. This jumping on point one shot features 24 all new pages chronicling the events of the Big Bang, the police brutality protest gone wrong that changed the face of the city of Dakota forever by unleashing a wave of superpowers across its population. As the world watches, a bullied teenager will become the hero known as Static. A framed scientist will go on to run as the super weapon hardware and a stranded alien will meet an ambitious young woman who will transform his life and remake the pair as the all powerful icon and rocket. Also included is the 17 page primer story originally released during the world famous DC Fandom event further expanding on our hero's origins and where they're going next and setting up an entire world of allies, enemies, and surprises. This one was so dope. So dope. If you have not downloaded this, please go to DC's, DC, DC Comics' app or Comicology and download this right now. Spawn 315 Chang Gang Part 2 A new team but will they last? We've got She Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn, Medieval Spawn, and The Reaper. Spawn has been so good. That's all I gotta say. Spawn has been amazing. If you're not reading Spawn, you're losing. I'm serious. Like, this book is that good. And finally, we have Future State Superman House of L number one. Centuries into the future, the bloodline of Kal El, the hero we know as Clark Kent, continues. Meet a new generation of Kryptonian heroes as they stand against one of the greatest threats they've ever faced, a diabolical foe called the Red King. Get ready for the unexpected debuts of the twins known as Rowan and Ronan 
Rowan and Ronan Kent, descendants of Jonathan Kent. Rowan is the new Superman of Earth, while his sister is a Blue Lantern. Also on board are Theandra Van El, whose mother was Tamaranian, and other heroes, all led by the original Man of Steel himself. Please don't miss an appearance by the Black Racer in this one as well, too. I enjoyed this one simply because there is lore on top of lore with this book. So, uh, yeah, definitely check that one out, too. In Source Wall News, DC Comics is announcing 11 surprise titles this year. During a virtual presentation to comic book store owners on this past Friday at the annual Comics Pro retailer event, DC Comics Vice President of Sales and Revenue Nancy Spears name dropped several upcoming comic book projects as part of a discussion of an expanded variant cover program. Now, some of these titles seem likely to be huge hits while others are kind of head scratchers. I'll run these off for you. We have Deathstroke Inc., Harley Quinn animated series sequel, a Wonder Woman 8th anniversary title. So that's going to be good. Superman got his 80th, Batman got his. Wonder Woman should definitely get hers as well. We have Elseworld coming back. DC Vampires, it's a working title. Robin and Batman. Joker, a puzzle box. The Legend of Batman. Crush and Lobo. DC Middle Ages and my favorite out of this entire list, Nubia and the Amazons. Man, when I tell you I got hype when I saw Nubia's finally getting her own book, man, let's go. Let's go. It's about damn time. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. Thunder. Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, you couch potatoes and you bingers, let's jump into some movie and TV news. So, there is another Superman movie in the works at Warner Brothers, and yes, it is a reboot. I personally, when I heard the news, was like, okay, we're doing this again. Another reboot. This has been what? Let's see. There's Christopher Reeve. And then we got a reboot with Brandon Routh. And then we got another reboot with Henry Cavill. And now we're getting another reboot, whoever is going to be in this one. Hopefully it's Cavill. I don't want them to recast. Like, if you're going to reboot... Please, that's fine. But do not get rid of Cavill. Not that I'm a big Cavill fan. Well, I am. But <laughs> that's not it. I just think that if you're saying that... Let, let's just get into the story. So, Warner Brothers is gearing up for a reboot of the Superman franchise on the big screen once again. As reported by Shadow and Act and confirmed by Deadline, the studio is pursuing a new take on The Man of Steel. Once produced through J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot... And it's going to be written by, get this people, Ta-Nehisi Coates. Mm. Bad Robot's Hannah Minginelli is producing the reboot. No actors are currently attached to the movie, and it's unclear if Henry Cavill will remain in the lead role with the cape and tights. So, like I said, there are, there are reports that this movie is still going to be based within the DC Expanded Universe which is fine, but if you're going to do that, please do not recast Cavill. Write it, make it new, make it fresh, but keep the same actor. Just do that for us. And with the rumors of them that they're having a black Superman, I hope it's not Steel. It could be Val Zod. It could even be the Superman of Earth-23. I'm fine with either of those, but just not Steel. Shaq already ruined that for us. <laughs> Moving on, Avatar The Last Airbender confirms development of new shows and movies. Now, Nickelodeon has announced the launch of a new division dedicated to creating new series and movies based in the world of Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. The division will be called Avatar Studios and will be led by original creators and executive producers Michael DiMartino and Brian Konzit. 
Konetsuko. I just killed his name. Avatar Studios will work will debut on Paramount Plus, Disney's uh, not Disney, sorry, Nickelodeon's platforms and unspecified third party platforms as well as in cinemas. The first project for Avatar Studios is set to be an animated theatrical film. No further details are revealed, but the project is scheduled to begin production this year. This is going to be amazing. Um, hopefully, if we get enough fans behind this studio and they give us the quality content that we're looking for, we can even say, okay, I'm ready now. You, you can give me another live action, but please be careful with me. Because we all know that last one was trash. Anyway, Spider-Man 3 has a name for the third film. After a series of teases from the film's cast, including Tom Holland, Jacob Balton, and Zendaya, Spider-Man director John Watts kind of set the record straight and revealed the new Spidey sequel that will be titled Spider-Man No Way Home. The stars of the film reveal the title in the new video as the stars discuss the, f- the fake titles that they were receiving that can't be trusted. I saw, let's see, Zendaya had Home Slice. I think Tom Holland had Home Room or something like that. I forget what they had, but the new title, Spider-Man No Way Home. Hopefully it's a little uh, leading to the fact that he's going to be off world somewhere. Maybe we'll get Secret Wars. I don't know. I'm just hopeful. But we'll see though. DC's Blue Beetle movie in the works. And it already has a director. Now the rap reports that Charm City Kings director Angel Manuel Soto is set to direct Blue Beetle which will focus on Mexican-American teen Jamie Reyes, the third character to adapt the Blue Beetle name. Writing the film is Mexican-born Gareth Dunnett Alcor, writer of Universal's upcoming Scarface remake. Jamie's my favorite Blue Beetle, like a lot of people. Hopefully they give Ted Cord some love in this movie. But if it's done right, Blue Beetle could be just as big as the previously mentioned Spider-Man, if done right. Hopefully it will, but Blue Beetle could be as big as Spider-Man, if done right, but we will see. More DC news. We got a first look at Blackfire in costume. Now, Blackfire for the show Titans is being played by Damaris Lewis, and she's gonna pose a major threat to the Titans and all the good they've managed to do but the tees only offered a brief glimpse of Lewis and didn't really show her in costume at the end of season two. Now we have our first official look of her as her, as in her black fire suit. And it features a lot of cool details expertly broken down to two additional costume breakdowns released with the new photo. She strikes a pose in a new suit, which features a glorious, gorgeous purple and black color scheme broken up with the silver and dark gray accents that blend into the purple and blue suit. The way the boots flow to the upper leg is especially cool, and it's also a bit of purple in Lewis's hair just to finish off the theme. I really like what they're doing. I remember seeing Anna Delp's, uh Starfire and looking at Demaris Lewis's Blackfire costumes. These look amazing. And I can't wait for Titan season three. Hey, Archer, sue me. <laughs> Shout out to Hey, Archer, man. That's my guy. He doesn't like Titans, but I love Titans. And I think that's just where we kind of where we break up. <laughs> Finally, we have Marvel's MODOK release date and first look trailer. Now, Hulu has revealed the series uh, has a release date. And the teaser trailer for Marvel's MODOK, which is set to premiere on the streamer on Friday, May 21st. That's my sister's birthday. Ah, cool. Now, Hulu describes the show as, um, in Marvel's MODOK, the megalomaniacal supervillain MODOK, voiced by Patton Oswalt, has long pursued his dream of one day conquering the world. But after years of setbacks and failures fighting the Earth's mightiest heroes, Modoc has his evil organization AIM into the ground. He's run it ragged. Ousted as AIM's leader while also dealing with the with his crumbling marriage and family life, the mental organism designed only for killing is set to confront his greatest challenges yet. 
<laughs> this is gonna be hilarious. I can't wait to check this one out. Hopefully you guys do the same when it comes out on May 21st. Please be sure to check that out. Let's hop into Thumb Life. Peace, love, and video games. That's all like Donkey Kong. Yeah. Batman is playing Galaga. All right, gamers, let's hop into some big news. We just recently celebrated Pokemon Day, and we did that with a release of some new material. Well, not new, but remastered. The remakes of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are coming to the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo officially announced the remakes titled Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Pokemon Shining Pearl will be released later this year, ending years of speculation and rumors. The new games were announced as part of a Pokemon presentation posted to Pokemon's YouTube channel earlier this week. A brief tease of the games were revealed during the, the Nintendo Direct, revealing that other world travel will use a more chibi style than 2019's Pokemon Sword and Shield. However, battling will remain the same as past Pokemon games as opposed to more simplified versions as seen in Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee. It's going to be amazing to see this game play out on the Switch here and how they're going to use the more chibi style. Um, I think it's going to be, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be dope. I don't have any complaints about this at all. And shout out to Spicy Ramen Podcast, man. I enjoyed hanging out with that guy last night. We and him had a good time talking about Pokemon, Power Rangers, and all in between. It was a great time. So if you ever get a chance, check out Spicy Ramen Podcast. Tell them Nick sent you. We also had the Sony State of Play. Now here are some of the announcements that came out of that. Let's go ahead and run these down. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Integrated will arrive on PS5 on June 10th. Not only will the PS5 version be a free upgrade for those who own the PS4 version, but there will also be a new story episode players can purchase that will feature Yuffie. Kina, Bridge of Spirits, that's my wife's name, it's in a beautiful name, (laughs) it will be released on PS5 and PS4 on August 24th, 2021. Odd World Soul Storm will be released on PS4 and PS5 on April 6th. Furthermore, the PS5 version will will be one of PlayStation Plus's games for free on April 2021. Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time is being released on PS5 on March 12th. It will feature faster loading times, save transfers, 3D audio support, adaptive triggers, and other DualSense features. And the game will run at 4K slash 60 flops per second. And finally, Knockout City was recently announced at the last Nintendo Direct. And it looks like it also is going to be announced for State of Play. It will be released on PS4 on May 21st for 20 bucks, And will have backwards compatibility and enhancements for PS5 gamers. I think anything they do at this point here for State of Play is going to pale in comparison to us waiting for the PS5 to be released. <laughs> and plus, with not a lot of people having PS5s, people are really not checking for State of Plays. But, new announcements there. Govern yourselves accordingly. PlayStation VR 2 has been confirmed. Now, PlayStation announced that the next generation of PS VR headsets but won't be necessarily called psvr2 and it won't be coming in 2021 so we got a little while to wait sony confirmed that psvr2 will come to ps5 and will connect to ps5 with a single cord to simplify setup and improve ease of use while enabling a high fidelity high fidelity visual experience it's described as a next-gen vr system that enhances everything from resolution and field of view to tracking and input. No images have been released for the device as of yet. The headset will also come alongside the introduction of a new PSVR controller, which will incorporate some of the key features found in the DualSense wireless controller, along with a focus and a focus on great ergonomics. However, the headset won't be available this year either. There's still a lot of development underway for the new VR system, so it won't be launching in 2021. So we have something coming. We don't know what it is yet, but we 
we can still be excited about it, right? I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It get delayed and never come out? Or it comes out and can get our hands on it? Kind of like the PS5. Sorry, a little bitter. Anyway. In other news, legendary wrestler The Big Show swaps WWE for AEW. Wrestling icon Paul White, a.k.a. The Big Show, has signed a new deal that will transition him from the WWE to competitor All Elite Wrestling. White will join AEW as both a wrestler in the ring and commentator on AEW's new show, AEW Dark Elevation. White's new role will focus in some capacity on mentoring young talent at AEW with his years of professional wrestling experience, as well as educating fans of his commentary. AEW Dark Evolution Elevation will focus on established and rising stars on the AEW roster and will air on Mondays at 7 p.m. on AEW's YouTube channel. This one came out of nowhere. Kind of like an RKO. <laughs> but yeah, like I woke up that morning and I was like, what? The big show is in AEW? I didn't even know that his contract was up. But at the same time, People are going to a, a better world when it comes to this this wrestling thing, man. I mean, WWE, I'm sorry. The only thing keeping you alive in the main roster is Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns and NXT is the only thing keeping WWE alive. Outside of those two things, well, let, let, okay, I'll be, I'll be more honest. Outside of Roman Reigns, Bianca Belair, and I guess The Fiend, and he's dead too. But those people at NXT is the only thing keeping WWE alive. The rest of it is garbage. Garbage. But I'm going to take out that trash. So I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please, please follow the content. Subscribe to the content. Listen to the content. Let your boy know what you think about that content. Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out our YouTube channel. Please be sure to like and subscribe to videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek? <laughs>